Celebrate that today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You want to hear a funny Christmas story? All right, I'll tell you anyway. All right. So uh, one time, uh, so one of my one of my kids, they like unwrapping presents, right? Like everybody does. But so like, he likes to have layers of of presents to unwrap, you know. And so I I thought, wow, he loves unwrapping presents. So I kind of misunderstood what he liked. So I, I I made his present like really hard to open. And so, like, I put all this tape on it, and, you know, and, and so I'm all excited because I'm thinking he's going to love this because this is a real hard one to unwrap, right? So I'm, turned out, I, I, I watch him, that, I guess the story is not that funny. I should tell a different one. I'm you're not feeling it. <laughs> all right. So, so we get there Christmas morning. I should have told the story to somebody before I, you know, warmed it up. Anyway, so... We get there Christmas morning. I'm all excited that he's going to be so happy that he has a fun unwrapping. Well, it turned out he didn't like challenging unwrapping. He liked just unwrapping. So I ruined his Christmas, you know, but uh, he forgave me. He still loves me. But uh, anyway, yeah, I, I wasn't going to name him. I wasn't going to name him this one. So, But uh, we had some funny Christmas stories at the Christmas party, too. That was pretty fun. Some of them were a little edgy, but uh, I, I thought that was... Uh, pretty fun. But anyway, let's get into the word. You ready? For, I feel like I got to pray again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, let's go ahead to Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy. That will be for all people. For unto you, born this day in the city of David, is a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And today I want to talk to you about the miracle of Christ's birth and all of what happened around that incarnation. And I want to talk to you about when God births miracles. It's amazing. And there's so much around it. There's so much around any time that God does a miracle. You ever just looked afterwards and just said, wow, he did this and he did that and he lined up this and, and, and how he brought everything together. See, God does amazing things when he brings a miracle and I want to talk about that. And sometimes there's challenging parts too. So like when we read the word, sometimes we tend to kind of romanticize it. You know what I'm talking about? We, we skip over the hard part. We skip over like what was, you know, the challenging part. Like we see, you know, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill to men, right? We, we, we have that and it sounds like, wow, this was so amazing, but we skip over some of the hard parts, we just see, oh, the, the sky was beautiful and the stars were out. And they were walking on the, the uh, you know, on their way to Bethlehem and just a little layer of snow crisping under their feet. And, and you know, silent, I love that song, Silent Night. You know, silent night, you know, it's just so beautiful, right? And you just think everything was wonderful and easy. I mean, the, all right, now the, the multitude of angels, yeah, that was that was pretty awesome. Can you imagine that? When the shepherds are there and all of a sudden like there's one angel, then the, then the sky is just full of angels and they're singing. All right, that part was definitely amazing. But also, like, I'm pretty sure those, an those animals in the stable stunk. Right? Like, I don't think God made them not stink that day. I'm pretty sure they stunk just like they did every other day. And so... One of the things that's really important, I think, when we're reading the word is that we get both sides of the story. Sometimes we just want to look at the, wow, the exciting part, but then there's also the challenging part and the difficult part. You know why? Because in real life, we live on both sides, right? We experience that amazing miracle, and if we only talk about that and not like the challenges and the faith and the trusting and all of these things that kind of led up to it, then we're, we're missing half the story. Amen? So that's what I want to kind of talk about a little bit for 
a little bit this morning, maybe shorter than normal. I, tr I was trying. I was looking at my notes, and I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Might be regular. Our nephew be like, preach longer. Preach longer, Pastor John. But the, the remember Dave O'Reilly? I remember Pastor Joe would go on for like, back in the day, like you guys, like the last couple of years, he didn't go as long. But I remember back on Central, like he could go two hours without getting sweaty. And so he'd be like, he'd be like an hour and 50 minutes into it. And he'd be like, I should stop. And Dave O'Reilly would be like, no, preach longer, Pastor. Preach longer. I'd be like, shut up, Dave. No. <laughs> we can come back next week. No, but anyway, the birth of Jesus was the fulfillment of a promise to mankind. Isaiah 7.14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Micah 5.2 says, But you, O Bethlehem, Epaphras, are too little to be among the clans of Judah, but from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler of Israel, whose coming forth is from old, from ancient of days. These promises literally held and waited for not just hundreds of years, but thousands. I mean, the very first came right after Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, and he said the serpent will bruise his heel, and he spoke of the Messiah. That's, a, that's another whole message right there, because right at the moment of infraction, God's already thinking about redemption. Mm, just know about that. Every time we fall, it's not in my notes, but every time we fail, you know what Jesus is thinking about? He's thinking about redeeming us. He's thinking about getting us back. He's thinking about doing a miracle. Amen? And I, I remember one time, I was, any, anybody waiting on the Lord for anything? Anyone believe in God for a promise? Am I okay? Right? A few of us, right? I remember one time I was, I was praying, and I was like, Lord, when is this going to happen? I'm waiting. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I'm waiting on you. I was like, oh, I knew it. <laughs> you know, and sometimes, you know, he's, he's, he's waiting on us to kind of line up. Sometimes he's waiting on us to mature. I mean, I'm not going to give the keys to a car to a two-year-old, right? He's waiting to do stuff in our hearts. Sometimes he's waiting. It talks about in the Old Testament how he wasn't ready to bring judgment because he was still allowing more time for repentance. You know, like 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. You know, so he's allowing time for us to kind of get our hearts right. And, and he doesn't want to give us things that we're not ready for. And so, you know what, let me just tell you this. His timing is perfect. It was about 4,000 years for Jesus to arrive on this planet, like the most important event in the world. And it, what was going on? I mean, like, why, why did he take so long? His timing is perfect. And it, was, it says in the word that the exact right moment was when Jesus arrived on this earth. He wasn't late. He wasn't early. He's right on time. Amen? Another cool thing that we see here is the miracle of Jesus arrived in seed form. See, Jesus didn't even, you know, we think of Jesus arriving as a baby. Well, actually, he arrived before that. When the Holy Spirit just started him alive in the womb of Mary. And, and we see that verified in Scripture, even in Luke chapter 1, verse 30. It says, And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb, and you shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Right? But remember, when Mary went to go away and hung out with Elizabeth, what happened? She goes up to, to her, and, and, and Elizabeth is pregnant with John the Baptist. And the baby leapt in the womb and recognized, and Elizabeth is fill, filled with the Holy Spirit. See, Jesus was already there and doing stuff. <laughs> See, sometimes our miracle starts and it's almost imperceptible. But it's still there and it's still a miracle and it's begun. And, 
and I love that how, how Jesus, and, and, and this is probably why we miss it sometimes, God just began in the most humblest of places. I love how our Savior, he didn't arrive as a good king. He didn't arrive in a palace or somewhere fancy. He didn't even pick the very first people to know about him to be fancy people. It was the shepherds. They were kind of low on the totem pole. He didn't invite them over a lot because they stunk. I mean, he got the free wise men, so that was pretty cool. Some people think they were kings, but it could have been, but it doesn't actually say that. You know, but he, he was born in this cave. You know, even when Jesus rose from the grave, he chose people that were not considered good witnesses to be the first witnesses. I mean, one lady was like an ex-prostitute who had demons cast out of her. You know, that's not going to hold up in court. Who saw him? Well, this, oh, yeah, Mary. We all know Mary, right? Isn't that cool? You know what that means? Like, Jesus can use all of us. That's great. It's not our eloquence. It's not our resume. It's our submittedness and our willingness and his power and his grace and his ability. That's pretty great. That's what I love. That's one of the many things I love about Jesus. You know, so we got to be careful that we don't ignore these little small miracle beginnings. Zechariah 4.10 says, For who has despised the day of small things? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel, speaking of the rebuilding of the temple. And, and so it didn't look like much in the beginning. Like even with Jesus. Like when Jesus was walking on earth, like as when he was 30 and he's doing miracles, like, a lot of people believed. A lot of people still didn't believe, right? But, you know, a fair amount of people accepted him as, his, as the Savior and the Messiah, right? But, like, before, when he was born, like, just, it was like a couple people that could see it. I mean, the shepherds don't count because angels appeared and told them. So, I mean, obviously, like, they had a little help. But what about, like, Simeon and, and Anna in the temple, They'd been praying and believing God and interceding. So, Lord, bring your Messiah. They were watching. So when he showed up as a baby, they could discern it. That's how, let me tell you, when we're, when we're really watching, we're going to discern that thing when it arrives. See, when we're praying and interceding for that loved one, like really, not, not listen, not complaining that they're not saved not griping about their weaknesses. That's not praying. I'm talking interceding for them, believing for that spouse, believing for whatever that miracle is, praying. Then we just see like this little doing. We're like, that's it, right there. I'm, I'm, I'm calling it forward. Come on, come on, let's go. And we start to reel it in in prayer and believing in faith. See, those kind of people are rare. I think we got a lot of people like that in this place, though. I'm believing God for all kinds of miracles. I mean, we're just getting started. I'm believing for souls, revival. Amen? How many are going to look for it with me? Amen? We're like, all right, all right. See, and God spoke. And this is really cool because God spoke in like all these different ways. I love it. I love it when God makes his will clear to me, right? You like to know? It's like, you know, but he, he put prophecies in the Old Testament. There was over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament talking about Jesus. He put a star in the sky. So that's a pretty good one. How many would like that, right? You know, a star to tell you where to go, right? That'd be pretty good. Gabriel appeared to Mary in person. And in Luke 1 28 says, And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. And then he appeared in a dream to Joseph in Matthew 1 20. But as he considered these things, so let me put a side note here. So Joseph finds out that 
Mary is pregnant. He knows it wasn't him. And so he could have had her stoned, but he's like just going to, he was going to just sort of divorce her. They were engaged, but you still had a divorce. So he says, I'm just going to do this quietly. And this kind of shows he's a really good guy. He, I mean, that would be, I mean, most guys would be pretty upset. All the more back and then, because it's like totally humiliating to Joseph. And so he was thinking about it. And behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, there's another prophecy. There's another one that hadn't been fulfilled yet. This is kind of cool because this is another way that the Lord leads us. Because Jesus is supposed to be born in Bethlehem, right? But they're in Nazareth, right? Because that's what the prophecy said. And so God used outside circumstances to put Joseph and Mary where they were supposed to be. Luke 2, 1. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar, Augustus, that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinus was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. So this is interesting. So why didn't God just give him another dream? Go to Bethlehem. Have the baby over there. Why didn't he... Send another angel. Was Gabriel busy that day? Was, I don't know. What's Gabriel's day off? Is it Wednesdays? I don't know. What, why didn't, you know what? God is not limited to speak in only one way. He speaks to me through his word. He speaks to me through just that still, small voice. Sometimes he speaks to us through circumstances. But I'll tell you this. I know he's... You know, he's not slack concerning his promises. You know, I remember one time when I first was about to get saved. Man, this is a long time ago. I was running from the Lord. I was in Orlando. I wanted to go back to Massachusetts to be with my girlfriend. And God was blocking it. I had no vehicle. I had no means. My dad was going to, like, let me stay at the house, and then he like raised, he's like, okay, if you go there, you have to pay this much in rent. I'm like, what? <laughs> rent? Oh, man. And so, like, I didn't go up there, and you know what happened? I ended up giving my life to Jesus in church. The one that my dad made me go to. I'll tell you this, parents, I'm just saying it. I'm not going to, like, make you feel guilty. But make your kids go to church. Just saying. Grandparents, offer to bring them. All the time, man. They need it. And I, I, would, I listen, I didn't like it. When I, when I first got saved, I remember my dad would bring me, and I was mad at him. Well, he didn't bring me. He made me go. Forced me. He says, you know what he said? I, so we, long, I, I wasn't planning on saying this, but... I don't know, it's for somebody. So I moved in, he'd moved to Orlando and was in an apartment. And so I moved in, I'm sleeping on the couch because I didn't have a room. I dropped out of college at that time before I went to Bible school. I'm sleeping on the couch. He's charging me rent, the same as everybody else, to sleep on the couch. How's that fair? So then this, so then this, then he goes, uh, he goes, you got to come to church on Sunday. I'm like, what? And he goes, under my roof, go to church. I'm like, under this is one third my roof. <laughs> I, so I went to church, and so I would be there, and I mean, it was very, you know, moving and a grooving, worshiping church, everybody's praising the Lord, and, and like I'd be sitting next to him, and I remember the moment when I, I wanted to start to enter in, but my dad was next to me, and I wouldn't, didn't want to give him the satisfaction. 
because I didn't want him to look over and be like, yeah. I'm like, shut up. So if I wasn't sitting with him on that Sunday, I'd be like praising the Lord. And then I'd be next to him, I'd be like this. Because I don't want to. And then finally, the Holy this is when I was starting to get right with Jesus. Finally, finally, the Lord is like, really, John? You realize this is ridiculous. And I was like, I was like, all right. And he's like, yeah. All right, I love you, Jesus, more than I don't want to give my dad the satisfaction. <laughs> anyway, I said all that to say, God speaks to us sometimes through circumstances. Maybe we go to whoop. I remember Pastor Joe used to say this all the time. I don't know if he said it in the past couple of years, but he used to say this. I took every chance to leave St. Petersburg, but God kept bringing me back. Right? All right, so you all heard that one. Right? And he'd be like, I tried. But God kept saying, come here. Nope, I'm blocking it, blocking it, stopping it. You know what? That's when you go, all right, okay. Sometimes God speaks to us in those things. Now, just depending how stubborn we are is how long he has to keep putting up those walls. I mean, I think sometimes he's like, dang. Once I get that stubbornness on the right direction, we're going to go places. <laughs> but until then, you're just going to keep going <laughs> into that wall. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's, you know what? We just line up with him, and man, look out. Amen? Amen. So his direction going to come in many forms. And listen, here's, here's a little helpful thing. You ready? Because we want like God's will, like we always want to have like a star or something. And, and maybe we feel like, you know, we would follow it more. I sometimes question that. But he wants his will for our lives more than we want it. So quit worrying. Start submitting. Use all that worry energy over to submitting and seeking energy. Amen? Where we're like, mm, oh, is this, is this, wait, wait, just seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Amen? Is it hot in here? How many women think it's perfect? All right, it's too hot. Can you just drop a one? All right, that's how you know. That's how you know. Unless you're pregnant, that's the only time the men and women can agree at least in my house. But then, well, anyway, I'll be good. I'll just stop right there. Another thing that happened is warfare surrounded the birth of the miracle. So first of all, we got this census going on, and people are all over the place. You know, they're, they're, you know everybody's going to travel for the census, and things are going on. Mary had to travel while pregnant. Ladies, on a donkey. Not very comfortable. They go, they finally get there, and there's no room in the inn, so they got to go in the, in the stable, which was a cave. She gives birth in the cave. Like, how, like, nobody could be like, all right, I'll give you our space, right? Like, wouldn't you think that, like, there's a pregnant lady out here? Give her your space. Nope. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. Ever feel like that? Nobody cares. It's not going to stop God's miracle. So at some point, we got to let it go. I wanted to say, don't cry about it. Stop crying about it. But I won't say it. <laughs> you ever have somebody tell you that? They're like, I was going to tell you this. I'm like, I think that counts. <laughs> you just told me that. But you know what? Listen, God's got it under control. But there's warfare. You know, all of Mary's friends, the people back home, thought she was promiscuous. That reputation lasted all the way and followed Jesus. Because the Pharisees were like, they mentioned it in one of their when they were attacking them. And so she had to have carried that. See, now we're like, Mary. You know, if you're Catholic, you got a whole, like, shrine and everything. But for us, we're like, yeah, Mary's pretty great, you know. But not then. She was, like, the one everybody looked down to. You know, sometimes people don't understand when we're following the call of Jesus. 
you know, Adam and Martha were here a couple of weeks ago, and I remember when they decided to be missionaries in Papua New Guinea on the other side of the planet, very far away, and even in Papua New Guinea, it's far away from wherever civilization is in Papua New Guinea. <laughs> it's out there. And, and we were looking at, like, you know, the, the um, you know, getting a vehicle from, like, the, the capital over. There ain't even roads. <laughs> you got to put it on a boat and go around to where they are. And so I remember they were telling me in the beginning some of their family members, who are now all very supportive, but some of them were like, they didn't understand. Like, you're taking our kids and our the nieces and nephews and grandkids away from us. They were following a call. Not everybody's going to understand when we follow the call. They don't understand like, like when we invest our time and our resources and our energy and we just say, you know what, I'm following Jesus. But you'll find out eventually, hopefully sooner rather than later, at least when they come to Jesus, they'll be like, ah, I get it now. Adam's, Adam's parents weren't even saved when he first started this journey, and then they both got born again. It's pretty great, huh? Yeah. It's great. I love to see Jesus save families. Oh, that, Remember when I talked about that way in the beginning? Let me tell you, God still loves saving families. Amen? How about that promise? Believe God for that promise. Amen? So um, uh, I just I skipped a lot. I just jumped all ahead here. Let's go to Matthew chapter two, verse one. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, "Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him." When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. So these wise guys show up, and they're like, hey, we're looking for this new king. And Herod's like, what? Because he was the king, and so he's like, that's my job. <laughs> You're talking about a replacement? And so all of Jerusalem, like, in uproar about this. They're freaking out. So much so that horribly Herod went and murdered all the children in the region of Bethlehem. Right? I mean, terrible. And God warned Joseph to flee to Egypt. And so this was not a happy time for everyone. You know, and it was prophesied, you know, uh, and, and Matthew cited it in, in 2.18. A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they were no more. Let me tell you something. Satan did not want the promise to happen. He never wants God's promises to be fulfilled. He didn't just try a little bit to stop it. I mean, and I hate to even bring this up, but mass murder of children is like the worst you can do. And, and so he really, really was working hard to stop it. But you know what? God's working really hard to make it happen. And God's way better at his job than Satan is at his. Because every time Satan does it, he's like fulfilling a prophecy. It's like, you're so stupid. <laughs> it says, like, if he knew that... Jesus was going to rise from the dead and do this, and then he wouldn't have done it. And it's like, didn't you read it? <laughs> he prophesied it. It's like, he, he, just, he just can't pay attention or something. I mean, you know, now we're kind of sometimes worse when we fall for his tricks, but you know what? See, God's way better. God's always like a thousand steps ahead. Like those movies like Oceans 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, 21 all of the Oceans movies, and you're like, wait, what? And then afterwards, at the end, you're like, oh, they did this in the beginning, and they, oh, the whole time was part of the plan. That's Jesus times a million. Yeah. And then we worry still. 
We're like, yeah, that's Jesus. And then, like, we get a flat tire, and we're like, oh, how am I going to pay for this? This is a little bit not right, and where's this, and what's the... You ever, like, my, my little, uh, like, area, one area that God's been working on me, one would be, like, car problems. Oh, I used to get so mad. Get so mad. You ever get mad, like, you know, oh, man, I just, and then, like, you know, stuff breaks around the house or something. And so I had, um, I had uh, our uh, washing machine, it, it just died. Stop, you know, we open it up, and it's just full of water. So it turned out that it was, I was like, I think it's probably the pump. So I was like, okay. So I ordered a pump, came same day, Amazon, wow. And so I'm, I'm like, replace it and do the whole thing. And then, and then, like, it starts to go, and then beep, beep, the little light comes on with the, with the signal, and it didn't work. And I was like, Okay. I didn't freak out. I passed a test. And I was like, well, let me look up that code, that code, you know. I mean, maybe we're going to have to buy a new one. I mean, after I spent all that time, like, getting it and doing it and putting it in, watching YouTube videos, how to do it. And, and so then I got it in there, and then I look up the code, and it says, no water coming in. I was like, oh, I forgot to turn the things back on. Turn it on. I'm watching. It's like, it's working. Yay, we have clean clothes again. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are back to clean clothes. And so you know what? We've got to get to the point where we're trusting Jesus. Because what God wants to happen, he's going to make sure. The only trick is if we want to be part of it. Do we want to be part of it? And we follow his precepts. We follow in faith. We trust him. And he says, over here. Or he brings us over here by circumstances. We say, okay. You know what? But the enemy's going to attack. But you know what? Our God is always way ahead of them. Amen? And beyond guidance, he also makes the way. Watch this. In Matthew 2, verse 9. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose and went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way kind of cool. God speaks a lot when he's doing a miracle. If we're listening, he's speaking a lot. So they get gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And we know that those are symbolic of his kingship, his holiness, and, 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 and myrrh of his, of his burial, of his death, his sacrifice. But you know what? It wasn't just symbolic. God doesn't just do symbolic things. You know what it was? Provision. Provision to go to Egypt. He's like, hey, I need you guys to kind of bug out of here. Now, could God have just stopped Herod? Yeah, he could do it that way. But also, it was all a uh, fulfillment of another prophecy out of Egypt that he would bring the Messiah. So he's, he's, he's doing these things to create evidences that this is Jesus the Messiah. That's why he's fulfilling all of these things, and he's moving it, and he's doing it, and he's got his reasons, and he sends, but then he also brings the provision as well just when they needed it. I mean, they could have looked at that and said, oh, wow, that's pretty, and put it up here on the wall and be like, this is what we got when Jesus was born. We're going to make a memorial to it. No, nah, man, we don't need a memorial to that. That's just provision for the next thing. God's going to do his own memorial. Amen? See, God's not going to call us to something he's not going to equip us for. He's going to do it. Amen? You know, I, I had no idea when we came back to Gateway. You know, we felt God leading us here. And, and, and I told you this before, but we had like a couple council meetings. And in one of them, Carol had gotten this letter that says there was a balloon payment due in the loan. And, and it turned out to just be a, an error, but I didn't know it at the time. She's like, she's like oh, we might have to pay $75,000 in two weeks. 
And I was like doing the math in my head. Hmm, zero plus zero. He goes, no, actually we had, we actually brought some money too, but I was like, oh, we don't have that much at life for sure. And, and uh, I was like, and she goes, you, you still sure you're interested? Jokingly, jokingly. And I was like, I ain't worried about it. God's got this. Well, I didn't know when I said that, like, I was saying that, and I believed it like 90%. But then, you know what? He went and did like 10,000% and got us all this provision and everything. And I'm like, all right, you're good at what you do. Amen? So when he brings us to something, he provides what we need, what he, what we need because he wants to do it more than we do. It's his name on the line, not ours. So don't worry about it. Amen? He's promised all kinds of miracles. And remember that the miracle is not just, I mean, there's miracles that he does for us and healings and things, but that's kind of just one dimension. Even if it's a healing that you need, he wants to do that and have it be a testimony for somebody else's healing. You know, or salvation. He wants to do it for more than just for us. Amen? And when we trust him, he's going to make sure that we get the message. Don't worry about it. He can speak in a lot of different ways. Listen, seek, you know, but whether it's circumstances or angels, he's going he's gonna to do it. Not everybody's going to understand it. The team can come on up. But he's going to provide what we need when we need it. And remember this, that the miracle doesn't always arrive all done. Right? See, sometimes it arrives in a seed form. He doesn't always give us a potted plant or a full-grown tree. Right? Sometimes he gives us just a little bit and he says, take care of this. Cultivate this. And if we will have eyes to see, we will be among the rarest of people. Christ followers who can see that little beginning and see the Messiah. See redemption. Man, I want to, you know, those people are looking for it. Those are the people that see the promise, see the miracle before it even happens. So remember the miracle of Jesus, the miracles he has to do through us. And the best miracle, well, it's Jesus. It's Jesus himself. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing that was made was made. And in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. It's the incarnation. See, right there, that tells us, people say, well, it doesn't say Jesus is God. <laughs> He is, praise the Lord. Here he comes, already. So it was pre-trib, okay. No, but <laughs> he says, you know what? He is, right there, it says he created all things. Well, go to Genesis. It says God made all things. It said nothing was made without Jesus, the word in the flesh. Jesus is God in the flesh. That's what happened Christmas, the first Christmas day 2,000 years ago. Amen? Let's stand. Praise the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for being our creator. And thank you for becoming a man and paying the price for us. Lord, we just choose to believe you for all your promises. We believe for what you're going to do in us and through us. And Lord, we celebrate you this Christmas. We celebrate you, Jesus, for arriving on this earth for us. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.